Right. So, we're in Maya. Yeah. What you need to be in on when it comes to the default settings is you want to hit F5 on your keyboard and that will send you to the dynamics menu in Maya. It should be in FX at the top. So if you go on the top of your keyboard, 2, 3, 4, 5, on your F keys, F2, F3, F4, F5 will take you into the effects. Yeah? So at the top, everything stays the same, but you'll then see the end particles, fluids, end cloth, end hair, etc. at the top. What we'll be using today is mainly the end particles uh, menu. Yeah? End particles. Um, and what we're going to be using, uh, because we're not wanting to use end particles, we're going to be using the legacy particles. They're just the normal particles to begin with. Because when you get to use end particles, they have another node for you to conf get confused over even more. They have what you call the nucleus, yeah, which adds uh, physical properties to the particle animation. So just forget I've just said that. So we're just using legacy particles. All right. Uh, we have a particle tool, uh, which if you click on that, we can simply draw particles. Yeah? Just by clicking the mouse. Can you see it on the screen? You probably can't uh, because they're quite dark. But they only become active when you hit return on the keyboard. So if I hit return on the keyboard you'll see then that the particles are now highlighted. Everybody done that? Return, enter, sorry, enter on the keyboard, yeah? Then that activates those particles, yeah? You'll also see on your particles will now appear in your Outlook, which if you want to look, get to your Outlook is just by hitting the, either going up to the uh, Windows Outliner or just by hitting the, the screen function just over to the left hand side here and that will pull up the outliner along with the with the perspective window yeah so that's your particles highlighted and if you hit control a you'll then see in your attribute editor particle and particle shapes yeah So you're going to be using this window a lot in the attribute editor. You're going to be using this a lot. So just delete that for a moment. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to double click on the particle tool. Yeah. So as you can see, by double clicking on the particle tool, you get a lot of options open. So at the moment, we've got one particle being produced every time we click the button. So you can put in a name. Yeah. We can increase that and then that will give us a maximum radius. Yeah. So if I put in like 10 particles with a radius of 10 and then I click again, you'll then see a cluster of particles being drawn. And if you hit return, you'll then see a volume going in with that particle tool. Is everybody following along so far? No. Do you want me to start again? Just hit delete. Just tell me if I'm going too fast. Yeah? Please tell me if I'm going too fast. Okay, so everybody's okay with doing a sketch tool with a number of particles with a radius, yeah? Okay, just delete that now. And you can see just under the particle settings now, you've got uh, an option for sketch particles. So if you flick that on, yeah, and we'll re just re reduce the radius down. 
to 5. When you hold the mouse button down now in the actual perspective window you can now draw with particles. Yeah? Yeah? And again, if you hit return, that then makes those particles active. Yeah? So they won't do anything at the moment. If you press any animation, they won't do anything. Yeah? Because they're static. Yeah? So, with them being active, we can then put um, a field on them. So if you just put on turbulence, yeah, with them highlighted, they're already highlighted. If you go up onto your fields and solvers tab, yeah, up at the top you can create air, drag, gravity, newton, radial, turbulence, uniform, vor ver vortex, yeah. So I'm just going to create a turbulence field, yeah. Just, and you'll see then you've now got a particle and a turbulence field. And if you pre press play now they should all start moving. Well done everybody, you've just become effects artists. Level one. Yeah, How easy was that? That was two clicks. Two clicks and you're animating. Yeah. It's because you haven't got as enough. Uh, if you want to increase the frames, I've put about 500 frames into my timeline. That's why mine's going so slow. If you put more frames in, the animation's going to be a lot slower. Yeah. Yeah. Playback. Yeah. Make sure it's in real time in playback options. So if you go onto your playback options, right click, playback speed, and make sure it's play real time. Yeah? Everybody having fun so far? <laughs> Oliver, Oliver's not convinced. Everybody alright with that? Okay. So we can just delete those. Just delete those, yep. So that's given you a little taster of how you can create and manipulate particles within two clicks, yeah? With the particle tool. Okay. So I encourage you to mess about with the particle tool because it's a lot more controllable, yeah, for you. And you can get quite creative with that particle tool to create things like nebulas and galaxies and, and stuff like that. Yeah? I won't go into it now because I it will just take all day for you to go and start doing star fields and nebula clusters and all that sort of business. So we'll just keep it simple. Alright. So I'm gonna get into the emitters and the particle tabs now. Yeah? So we're gonna walk our way through this. I'm gonna concentrate for the next 10-15 minutes on the emitter. We're just going to be controlling, working on the emitter. Yeah. So where you go up to end particles, you're going to go down to the fourth section where it says legacy particles. Yeah. And just create emitter. Delete the the particles that you got from the particle tool. Just delete everything and the turbulence. And I just want you to create an emitter. Yeah. And I'm going to call this. No, I'm not going to call it anything. So if you press play, they start emitting particles straight away. Yep. So I'm now going to go and down on the right hand side where the attribute et editor is. If you haven't got it up, just hit control A. We'll bring up the attribute editor on your right hand side. You want you want to be legacy particles. Okay, so particles are like any other object, yeah, 
that you produce in um, in Maya. Yeah, a light geometry cameras. Yeah, you treat them exactly the same. So you've got the normal up the top here. You've got the normal translate, rotate, scale, x, y coordinates that you would have for any other object. Underneath this we've now got the basic emitter attributes. So by default they're set to Omni. So it emits particles in all directions just from one point. So if you click on that you get a number of options. Depending on what you're wanting the particles to do, you may want them to be an explosion type in which case you would select an Omni setting. Yeah? But if you want more control over the direction of those particles, you can have the choice of setting a directional. Yeah. So if you set them to directional, they'll just go to the default settings in the x direction of the particles. Yeah. So that's just purely directional. You can also set particles to an active surface of geometry. Yeah. You're not seeing them change imme immediately, but you're seeing the settings at the bottoms then change. Yes. You can set them to a curve or a spline curve. So you, if you wanted something that was like gunpowder going along a trail, the particles that will emana emanate from that curve uh, going from zero to about four on the actual curve, and they'll follow the curve. Yeah. Um, and I said there's a volume as well. The main types that you would probably be using as a games effects artist are the directional, the omni, and the volume. Okay. Now if you can master particle animation in Maya, 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 you can pretty much learn any particle system in any games engine. Yeah? because they're nowhere near as complicated as what they are in uh, authoring tools such as Maya. Yeah. So, I'm going to go back to Omni. Now I just want to show you this uh, one setting. Is that you've got f uh, time random off and time random on. If you put time random on, you can then see the actual particles begin to stream themselves. Yes, the more particles rates that you put in, the more strands that you're going to get. Can you see those? It's for doing things like ten tendril animations, uh, things like hair. Yeah. Everybody got that at the moment? It looks pretty, pretty, pretty basic, doesn't it? But if you had the particles selected, just stop the animation. If you put the particles on select selected and do the same thing and put a turbulence field on, yeah, reset the animation, you'll then see just how the turbulence field works with the time frame on, yeah. Do you want me to do that again? Okay. So on the particles, yeah, on the emitter, you've got cycle emission rate. Yeah. By default it's set to off. Because they you want all the particles that emanating in all directions, yeah? If you turn that on. They all go out in a line, yeah? So if you then put a turbulence field on them, because they're already, if you, ha you have to have them selected when you do this though. Select the actual particles, then go up to the field solvers and then just add another f turbulence on them. Yeah? And that's when you see the force is applied to those particles, yeah?
Yeah. Yeah. How are you finding it so far? It's good? Want some more? <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm just going to get rid of the turbulence. I'm going to put the frame random back to off. Yeah. And I'm going to scroll down. And you then start to get into the uh, nuts and bolts of the animation for the actual uh, emitters. So we then have speed. So if you put the speed up to 5, the particles will increase their speed. Yeah, They'll emit from the center a lot faster. You can put a random speed on those as well. So some will go fast and some will go slower just by adding the speed random value in there. Yeah. Just to note, everything like anything else in Maya is keyable. Yeah? All these functions can be animated and keyed. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get a bit into that a bit later on. All these other values are set to the other volume types, the directional and the volume of the emitters. So if we go back up to the top just press stop and if we select directional you'll then see the other options come up for the directional uh, attributes for the emitter so you can choose the direction they go in so I put it to zero you can set them to one so it goes up in the y direction you can increase the spread so instead of having a, a line, you can then alter the spread. If you put them full on, it's pretty much like how you would have a surface explosion going off uh, uh, in a game. Yeah. So halfway, you're pretty looking at much at 45 degree angles. Yeah. Again, you can vary the speed and the randomness of the particles that are emanating from that emitter but it's in a directional value for the particles. So if we want to make a laser, yeah, well I'll show you, I'll show you how that this is how you would do a laser. Yeah. Just to go on to before I do that though, um, I'll just show you what the last one is and that's the volume. The volume settings. So once you've got the volume all the volume attributes uh, come up. He says, "Stop the animation." All the volume attributes. So it, by default, with the volume, you can get a curve, a cube, a cylinder. Sorry, just go to the back. You can go from a cube, a sphere, a cylinder, a cone, and a torus. It's like a to it's like a donut, yeah. Like a donut. Now, depending on which you choose, you've got the speed settings that go away from the center. They can go around the axis. They can have a random direction and a directional speed as well. So the best way to show you that is on the cylinder. I'll just move in a little bit by using my wheel mouse, yeah. So by default it's going away from the axis. You can see the, arrow, the manipulators on the actual volume denoting that they're set to one and they're going to emanate away from the cylinder. So if I hit play that's what you'll see is the particles emanating from away from the cylinder. So if I go back and turn that to zero and press play they just stay static in the actual volume itself. Yeah. Um, so if I want to go around the axis and put them to 1, oh, I didn't hit them. One. you then see that the icons then changed and you've then got a, uh, uh, a manipulator that's showing that the actual uh, 
circulation is going to go around the actual cylinder. So then they actually have a twist on them. Yeah? They're still emanating out. Yeah? But they've now got turbulence going on them. So this and each of these changes for each of the different volume types. Yeah? So again, it can go away and out and around. Yeah. But I have a mess about with those for about five, ten minutes and I'll come back and we'll start doing uh, applying some of these uh, emitter types. No, I won't actually. I'll then go on, on to the actual particles, the look of the actual particles. Alright? So just have a mess about with those for ten minutes. Okay?